So my brother and sister are parents, and Chris teaches physics, so he's super great, super strong in math and science, and Melissa is a trained uh, English and social studies teacher. So when the girls come home and need help with their homework, they have a parent who is well-versed in any of the subjects that they need help with. And even, even still, my brother sometimes, Madeline will come home and she'll, she'll need help with math, but it's been 30 years since he'd had, he's had to solve for a quadrilateral or something. And so he's like, uh, like he's great at math, but he doesn't remember how to do it. You know that TV show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Do you guys remember that show? You know, a lot of times it's not that the fifth graders are smarter, it's just that they, they learn that stuff. And I could not name all the capitals right now. I could tell you a couple of them. But you know, we forget. We learn it at the time, but a lot of that stuff doesn't stay with us. So when Madeline comes home and she's like, Dad, I don't know how to solve for this quadrilateral or whatever, he sometimes has to like remind himself. He's got to go look it up and figure it out. And so parenting sometimes, and this happens to even non-parents, we come across something we want to do, and we don't know how to do it. And we are fortunate. We live in a day and age of YouTube. Like when I want to fix something in my house, I just go find a YouTube video to teach me how to do it. But, you know, we, we don't always know how to do everything. And sometimes our family, our kids need help, and we, we want to help them. But we don't have we don't have the knowledge, the skill to help them. Just like this poor dad. Obviously, his kid said, "Dad, teach me how to throw a baseball." And he's like, "Okay." And they went out. And obviously, that dad does not know how to throw a baseball. I don't know if you can see it from that far away. His form is terrible. It was awful. And and so this dad is trying to help his son, but he obviously doesn't know how to help his son. So I wanted to talk today about what do we do. When we need help and, and we don't have the answer, someone comes to us for help and we don't have the answer. So we need to figure something out and, and we can't find the answers from somebody. Like we don't have it within us to solve our problems. So what do we do when we come across hard things and we need help solving these hard things? So um, I, 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 I can't remember if I found this or if I came up with this acronym called ASK. I know this is going to seem really like, duh, Stephanie, I don't know. But when you need help, all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. You guys want to say that with me? All you have to do is ask. And ask, the first part of ask is to acknowledge. I think it's hard. In America, we are told to have it all together. Like our culture says you got to have it all together. you got to know how to do all the things. And we're told to not ask for help. But, but sometimes we have to acknowledge that we need help. I mean, if you think about, look at the AA system. In the AA system, the very first thing that they have to do is acknowledge that they need help. Before someone can get the help they need, they need to recognize, I don't know how to do this. That dad needed to acknowledge, son, I want to help you, but I don't know how to throw a baseball. Like, I don't have it in me to teach you how to do this. And so even in James, the Bible tells us, this is a biblical principle. In James, he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, if you don't know how to do something, you should ask. You need to acknowledge that you don't know and ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. When we don't know how to do something, when we need help, God's not like, oh, here she comes again asking for something else. He's never like, oh my gosh, you are so needy. God isn't like that. God's like, yay, they're coming to me. God wants us to come to him when we don't know how to do something, when we need help. He wants us to come into the Father's house and sit on our Papa's lap or sit at the table and be like, Dad, I got this problem, and I need help with it, and I don't even know what to do. You know, one thing that I think a lot of people, when they lose their parent, I think the, one of the hardest things when you lose a parent is, you no longer have anybody to go ask for help. Like my mom will say that. She's like, the thing, one of the things she really misses about her mom is like she doesn't have anybody to go talk to about it. And so we, we need to be asking for help. And then the second uh, S of ask is to seek and to seek God. We need to seek someone who has the answers. You know, if that 
if that dad, instead of trying to figure it out himself, had, let's say that there's like a baseball coach that lives in the neighborhood, a t-ball coach or something that lives in the neighborhood, or a high school kid who lives in the neighborhood who knows how to play baseball. He needs, the dad needs to acknowledge, I don't have the skills to help my son. <clears throat> and so, but you know what? Tim down the street, he coaches baseball. He coaches Little League. I bet he knows how. And so go down the street and say, hey, Tim, can you show my son and I how to play, how to throw a baseball? We need to seek out someone who has the answers. Even my brother, who is a physics teacher, I don't even know how he does that. I, physics was like my worst subject ever. And yet my brother, who knows all kinds of math, when Madeline comes home and needs help with her homework, he gets on YouTube, and they'll watch the YouTube video together, and then together they figure out how to do it. And he just needs someone to show him. He needs to seek someone who remembers how to, whatever, find the slope, or whatever. He needs to find someone to help him have those answers. And this is a biblical principle. In the Bible, John, John says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. That advocate is the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus died, Jesus was <clears throat> Jesus had all these answers. Like when they would talk, people would talk to Jesus, like, Oh my gosh, you're so smart. You have all this information. That you're so wise. And and but Jesus is like, I have to leave. I can't be the end-all, be-all knowledge for y'all, but you know what's better? When I leave, I'm going to tag team, and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And now all of you are going to have the Holy Spirit living in you. At communion, I talked about that holy of holies. That's where the Spirit of God lived. And when Jesus died, that Spirit comes into all of us. When we say yes to Christ, when we are baptized, that Spirit of truth comes and lives in us. We have access to God through the Holy Spirit whenever you seek him. And he's, so he's saying, God is going to give you someone who's going to help you. This is before YouTube came along. Now we have YouTube to help us. But YouTube can't give us all the answers. YouTube can't help you necessarily solve your marriage problem or your friendship problem or your work problem. It might show me how to like change out my toilet parts. But but we have to have an advocate. We have to have someone we can go to who has all the knowledge. And for us, that is the Holy Spirit. And even Paul, um, Paul was a church planner. He had a church back in Rome. So his kids would write him letters and he would send back knowledge. He would send back advice for them. And he says, in the same way, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, helps us in our weakness. He's like, when you don't know what to do, because they can't write letters every single time they have a question. He's like, when you don't know what to do, pray. And the Spirit himself will intercede for us through wordless groans. Sometimes we don't even know. I'm like, Lord, I know I need help, but I don't even know what I need. I'm so overwhelmed by this problem. I don't even know what I need. I just know that I'm like, ah. And he's like, come to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit himself will intercede. That means the Holy Spirit himself goes into the throne room and talks to God for you. I love that. That even when I don't have the right words, the Holy Spirit's like, I know what, I know what you need, Stephanie. I got you. And he goes to the Father also. Says, hey God, Stephanie's got this problem and she needs some help. We have, when we say yes to Christ, when we get baptized, we have an advocate, a helper, and when we seek him, when we go to him, we acknowledge, I need help. When we go to him, he helps us. And he doesn't ever burst in. What I love about God is, is God waits until you come to him. He doesn't barge into your life. Like I have a, a, a friend, Mandy. She's, she's such a good mom. And I remember when Luke, her son, was a baby. And he had one of those toys where you put the like round peg and the round hole and the square peg and square hole. And he had that toy and he's struggling because he's trying to put the square peg in the round hole and he's getting really frustrated. And she's just sitting there. And she's like, I'm waiting for him to acknowledge that he needs help and to seek me so I can help him. And our Abba Papa does the same thing. He doesn't come barging in when we have a problem. He waits for you to come to him to acknowledge that you have a problem and to seek him out. And then he's like, all right, let's, let's do this. Let's solve this problem. We don't have a God who is like overbearing. We have a God who says, I'm here whenever you need me. 
You can come to me. He doesn't barge in. And then the last one is to keep asking. I'm sure all of us have had a problem in our lives. We ask once and it doesn't happen. I went to God. I've prayed over my back multiple times. I, have my, I injured my back. The, the first time I remember my back being injured was high school. I have ba battled back issues since high school, my senior year in high school. And I've prayed about it. And I've had people pray for me. And, and when I really, really hurt my back, my friend Jill laid hands on me. And she prayed over me. And, and we've, I've had to keep asking, keep asking. And, and, and just last week, God gave me another step towards healing when he gave me that word of knowledge about this. This is part of the core of your problem. Sometimes we have to keep asking. So imagine that, that dad and his son, the baseball dad. What if instead of just asking Timmy, Coach Tim, to come and help him one time, what if they start having Tim over to dinner every week? Because baseball, if you, any of you have played baseball, knowing how to throw is great, but there's so much to the sport of baseball besides knowing how to throw the ball. There's learning how to catch, learning how to field. There's so much just smarts about baseball. We played kickball this week with the kids on the baseball field, and I had a kid pitching. I'm like, this kid obviously knows the game of, of baseball because bases were loaded, and when he had a choice to get someone out, he threw the ball to home plate. I'm like, that tells me this kid understands the game of baseball. If any of you understand the game of baseball, if you get the, pers the first person at first out, they score a run. But if you get the runner out at home, then you prevent the run. And so, like, the more you spend time with Tim, the more that dad and his son spend time with Tim, if that dad and Tim become golfing buddies, if Tim starts coming over for barbecues, they're going to start talking baseball. They're going to watch baseball games together. Tim's going to have them play catch. Maybe Tim's going to invite that little kid to be on his softball, baseball team. And now that kid's going to learn more and more and more and, and become a better and better baseball player. All of the problems that we have, all the problems our kids have, it's the same thing. We need to ask. We need to acknowledge that we don't know. We need to not seek and then keep asking. My dad has taught me so much about building stuff. And I'll be helping him. And I'm doing it. He's like, wait, wait, wait. Don't do it that way. I'm like, but this is the way you taught me. But he's like, well, let me show you this trick. Because I keep, every time I have a, a project, I still now ask my dad. Even though I'm like, I think I know how to do this. Because he'll have an idea that I didn't even think of. Or he'll have a trick, because he's done way more construction than me. He'll have a trick that I didn't even know. He'll teach me some cool thing that I didn't even know. So every time that I ask my dad, even though I think I know, he teaches me something else. And this is the kind of relationship we should have with the Father. Where we acknowledge, I don't know it all. We seek him out and we keep seeking him. We keep having that relationship with him. We keep going to dinner with our dad. We keep coming into his house. Because the more and more you come, you don't even have to ask sometimes. Like when I go home, I don't have to ask my parents for things. If they see that I'm hurting, they see that I need something, they'll just give it to me because they know that I need it. I don't even have to ask for it sometimes. And that's the beauty of having a God who's a God of relationship. But one thing that's interesting about God is sometimes we have to trust him and lean not on our own understanding and always submit to him and he will make your path straight. Sometimes God is going to tell you to do something that does not make sense. You're like, but my problem is this. He's like, yeah, but I need you to deal with this. I'm like, but my problem's over here. He's like, yeah, but we got to deal with this thing first. This is a root or this is an obstacle that's getting in your way. You know, like that little kid, he might want to just throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. And the coach might be like, okay, let's do some push-ups. He's like, but I want to throw the ball. He's like, yeah, but, and the coach understands like, yeah, but you're not strong enough to get the ball where it needs to go. So we're going to do some push-ups to get you stronger. So sometimes God will give you advice. Sometimes God will take you into a season that you don't understand to get you to the place he wants you to go. And it might not make sense, but he sees everything. I often think, like, when I'm talking to God, it's like I've got horse blinders on and these glasses, and the glasses have one tiny little pinprick hole that I can see out of. And that's my view on life. I have this really myopic view. I can just see this little portion, but God sees everything. He sees not only what's going on. He sees my heart. He sees everyone else's heart. He sees the future. He knows. 
He knows all of it. And he knows the best way to get there. And so sometimes I have to follow him when it doesn't make any sense. And the reason that I do that, this is one of my all-time favorite Bible verses. He's, God says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. My plans for you, Stephanie, my plans for you, Greg, my plans for you, Roxanne, are to prosper you and not to harm you. God's plans will never lead you to harm. God's plans lead you to a hope and a future. He says, and then you will call on me, you will come, you will pray, you will acknowledge, you will seek me, you will ask, and you will keep asking, and I will listen to you. You will seek me, and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart, and I will be found by you. God doesn't play hard to get. He wants you to find him. And so we need to ask him when we need help. We need to acknowledge that we need help and stop trying to do it on our own. We need to seek him out and we need to keep seeking him and trust him even when it doesn't make sense because we believe, we have to believe that God is a good God who has good plans for our future. And when we keep going to him and keep praying, he will not forget you. He will not look at you and be like, oh, get out of here. He's not like, oh, here she comes again. He's like, come on, baby. I got you. What do we need? Let's do it. Let's do it together. That's the kind of God that we serve. And so this week, I'm going to dare you, as I always do, to ask God. Think about that hard thing in your life. Think about that thing that you don't have answers for. Acknowledge that you need help. Seek God out and keep asking. I dare you to ask God into a situation that has you stumped. What's a situation in your life that has you stumped where things aren't working? And in what area do you feel like you're shutting down? Because I can tell you kids and adults, I see it in kids, when they really don't know how to do it, when they get so frustrated, they just shut down. I can't do it. That's it. I'm, I'm out. They do it in math. I don't know how to do it. They watch it once. That's it. I don't know how to do it. I'm out. I can't do it. And they just shut down. And then they don't even try. Is there an area in your life where you have shut down? We need to acknowledge that we need that help. And we need to ask God into that situation. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your situation. Or ask the Holy Spirit to come into areas of your life where you can use some help. Read John 14. What is Jesus saying to his guys? In John 14, Jesus gives a blueprint for asking for help to his guys. Read John 14. See what that has to say. And then, or, and, and, or, the more of these dares you do, the closer you're going to get to God. The more you're going to look like God. He says, or what you could do is, who in your life is struggling? Who in your life needs to ask? Be vulnerable with them. Talk to them about some struggles you've had and show them how you're using the ask principle to invite God in. Or ask an expert into your area that you're struggling. Get out there, get beyond God, and go find someone who can help you in the area that you need. And all of that's children said, Amen. Amen.